Hey, as with all of that, who wants to play stuff? It was okay, but after filming a few more episodes in advance, I realized I'm not doing what I really wanted to do with the series, which is game critic -y things combined with gameplay combined with thinking deeper into the games, but it really just evolved into nothing more than a standard oversaturated YouTube Let's Play with incessant references to Bartle's taxonomy. So, I'm back with the static blue background, except... Now I've digitally embossed my username into it, so it's, so it's more fancy. Yeah. Okay, start the review. When you think of Flash games, you don't typically think of anything with much scale to it. Most of them are just simple puzzles or platformers that you can play if you want to waste time. But... In the back of the room of indie Flash developers, there is a developer that decided to go deeper. Arctic Entertainment, notable for making actual depth with Flash Games medium. This is the cream of the crop, I'm telling you. They're notable for such games as Oversoul, Mech Quest, and their pet series, Adventure Quest. Specifically, in this video, we're talking about Adventure Quest Worlds, or AQ Worlds for short. The first game in the AQ series is a turn-based strategy game, and the upcoming third installment is known as AQ3D, which is in alpha and only accessible by premium members of the other two games. Oh, oh yeah, B before we continue, let's get the business model out of the way. Uh, Arctic's games are all free to play, but the developers can't live making weekly updates. Seriously, this, this game is updated weekly, and paying their bills with cheerful high fives, so there's some microtransactions going on here. However, there's nothing you're missing out on if you don't pay up, you just can't get some items which are typically either cosmetic, or easily replaced by a left cooling looking free item, and there's some new areas that you can't access. However, a few areas doesn't matter since this game's world is actually pretty huge. There's a varied palette of places you can go and tons of items to get. Furthermore, there's areas and other places you can't access by normal means. These are typically either event areas or secret areas, like a mech quest homage that actually has a full quest line dedicated. And that's just if you can find all the other secret areas to unlock it on your map. Or you could say, that's bull crap, and access the area by using those Letax or skills that you picked up from Watch underscore dogs. And by hacker skills, I mean figure out what the area's instance name is, usually something easy like the name of the area, or something generic like Desert, which is displayed in the bottom corner, and type slash join area into the chat box. I remember having a lot of fun with this thing by typing in generic or zone sounding things into the chat box like this. It took me to some pretty interesting places. Interesting places populated by interesting characters, right? Well, it depends. Most NPCs have a reference attached to their name, even if it has nothing to do with them. These guys tend to be a bit boring. And most overarching characters are either from another game, an author self-insert, or both. Fortunately, the developers know how to do a self-insert, like every other character, just with your personality. In fact, if one character was a Mary Sue, the other self-inserts would probably call them out as such, talk about it to the player directly, and then start a multi-mission side quest about kicking them out and sending them back to the elemental plane of cliché. This game doesn't take itself too seriously, as you might be able to tell, as that last sentence, and if fourth wall breaks for currency, this game wouldn't need microtransactions, as the self-inserts frequently talk to the player directly and you are openly referred to as the hero. It makes the game feel like all these epic quests you're going on are just a casual day hanging out with some friends instead of saving the universe. It also weirdly makes you grow attached to the other main characters, as after a while they feel like digital friends. Oh, so cute. And other than the aforementioned references and audience wall demolition, there are some other jokes, a few of which I actually found funny, like how in the title intro your character is struck by lightning and falls down a cliff. Or like a cutscene in the main game where Artix, who has time to lead Artix Entertainment and name the company after himself develop games and be a paladin in his spare time, goes insane and is defeated by you telling him that his shoe is untied, after building it up like it was some kind of special attack. I really do like the style of this game though, in fact I'm currently trying to make a game and that's exactly the tone I'm going for. Colorful fun that broke out of the AAA Asylum by throwing too much anime at it. And it really does throw a lot of anime around. This game as you see has an anime art style with beautiful, I'm telling you, scenery. And tons of unique armor and weapons as to customize your character. I feel like they went with anime, though, to make the game get away with greater levels of ridiculous, as it's easier to render increasing levels of weirdness with the simplistic levels of AM, that's anime-inspired American media. Art style aside, though, the game really does look nice. All the areas look great, the monsters are well-designed, and all gear is unique, meaning you have tons of options to customize your character. 
The armor's pretty cosmetic, too, since the only issue is that cooler-looking items require doing high-level quests, which, guess what, means grinding. Fortunately, you can pad yourself out with that grinding, since I noticed there's no noticeable change in stats with armor, just weapons. And you can buff either with items called scrolls, which upgrade items to a certain level. This means potentially unlimited freedom of customization. Although back to the grinding, it happens quite a bit, especially along the main storyline that no one falls because the side quests are just the interesting when you have to grind a lot to get powerful enough to defeat the final boss of the area. Fortunately, though, due to the bajillions of areas in this game, chances are there's somewhere else that you can go uh, to explore, grind, side quest for the rest of the play session. And like three days later, you get to the level that you had to get on the other side of the map while doing something not at all related to the main story, and you're like, oh yeah, I should probably go off and beat that Chaos Lord. So you do, and then you're about to move on to the next story quest. You go, hey, that's some cool over there, and you've got the main quest for another week. In my opinion, this is a good thing. It means you'll never likely run out of stuff to do, especially with the weekly updates providing all sorts of mid-level and end-game content. Oh, okay, though, seriously, back to that part. Weekly updates? What did the RX team do? Use their keyboards faster than a pro Counter-Strike player with five pounds of caffeine injected into them? Considering that, like I said before, all these items are unique, you typically think that AE would have some serious overtime hours when making all the stuff, but I think another reason for that art style is because you can make a new stuff with some imagination in half an hour in Photoshop. Seriously, you can. I tried. I also tried to find one real protruding issue with this game, and I really couldn't find one. Overall, this is a fantastic game if you can deal with the quick-to-move control scheme, a few microtransactions that aren't even required, and such petty crap as seriousness. There is some grinding, but it's mitigated by the fact that you can always just go into another billion areas at or below your level and just explore, grind, or side quest for a while. Also, remember that the first... <laughs> I... I can't talk today. Remember that third AQ game, AQ3D? Well, that's a remake of AQ Worlds in 3D, even if it cost money. As long as there's no subscription fee and you can rebind auto attack to LMB, well, I'd totally buy it. Oh wait, it, it's free to play, and it's on Steam Greenlight. An open beta is launching this fall. I cannot wait.